Hello, I'm Sheila Megger, Superintendent of Shawnee Heights. Our Board of Education has recently approved the 2024-25 school year budget. School funding can be quite complex, so we'd like to clarify some common misunderstandings. You may have seen the recent article titled, Shawnee Heights Board of Education Raises Tax Rate 6.49% After No Comments in Public Hearing. This does not accurately reflect our tax rate on, or the taxes our community will actually pay this year. In this section of the article, it does mention a lower tax rate. Tax rate and mill rate are often used interchangeably. The mill rate is used to generate taxes. This shows that our mill rate was 51.501 last year and we adopted 51.494 mills for this year. Those numbers are accurate and reflect a slight decrease of 0 .007 mills. We'll see those numbers throughout this presentation, so I'd like to show you where those numbers come from. Before we look at this form, I want to talk about the four funds or buckets of money that we collect taxes on um, for the school district. These funds include the general fund, which is used for salaries and daily operating expenses, the supplemental general fund, which is used for the same thing and helps supplement the general fund, and then the capital outlay fund, which covers facility needs such as HVAC replacement and roofing repairs. And then our final fund is the bond and interest fund, which is used to, for the payment of principal and interest on bonds, similar to how a mortgage payment might be for homeowners. The form shown here was published in the Capital Journal on August 22nd as part of the budget adoption process. You can see the general fund listed first. In the third column are the actual mills or tax rate that were assessed last year. You can see that it shows 20 mills here. This is a statewide uniform property tax that has been set at 20 mills since the 1998-99 school year. All 286 districts in Kansas assess 20 mills. The far right column shows the rate that we adopted for this year. You can see that number shows the required 20 mills as well. Below that, on the next line, is the capital outlay fund. This fund is statutorily capped at 8 mills. You can see we assessed 8 mills last year, and we assessed 8 mills for this year. Supplemental general fund is a couple lines down. Last year that mill rate was at 13, and this year it's at 14.7, which is an increase. On the bond and interest, um, a few more lines down. Last year this was set at 10.4 mills, and this year it's at 8.7 mills, which is a decrease. The number I really want to highlight is the, are the two circled at the bottom in red. If you total the third column, you get the 51.501, which is the total mill rate for last year. If you total the far right column, you get the 51.494, which is the mill rate adopted for this year. This reflects the 0 .007 mil decrease mentioned previously. About four years ago, the revenue neutral rate came into play. This requirement this required taxing entities to notify taxpayers if they are exceeding the revenue neutral rate. Revenue neutral means that we would generate the same exact amount of tax dollars as the previous year. If we generate more tax dollars, we are exceeding the revenue neutral rate. This is the form that we just looked at, but this time I want to focus on the fourth column. This column shows how many mills it would take to stay neutral or generate the same dollars as last year. If we total the same four funds, we get 52.906. You can see that circled in red at the bottom. The last column reflects the 51.494 mills that we adopted. You can see we are actually below the revenue neutral rate, which means that we will collect fewer tax dollars this year in Shawnee Heights. Last year we paid off some bonds early and were able to save some interest, which contributes to the savings for this year. The two big takeaways from the previous form are that our tax rate for Shawnee Heights did not increase, it decreased slightly. And the second takeaway is that we will collect fewer tax dollars this year, approximately $75,000 less. Another area that can be confusing is how the mill rate impacts homeowners. The two main things that impact property taxes are property valuations and the mill rate. The example in the article is intended to show that even with a decrease in the mill rate, an increase in property values could still result in increased taxes. This example of a $100,000 home that increased by 5.5% shows an increase of $32 in taxes. Using the current Kansas funding formula, 
This is not an accurate calculation of the taxes for this homeowner. So let's take a closer look. This is for a $100,000 residential property and it will we'll use the 51.501 mill rate from last year. Starting in the second column with the general fund, you see the $100,000 home listed. By statute, there is a $42,000 exemption on residential properties for the general fund only. Subtracting that exemption produces the $57,000 adjusted appraised value. The assessment factor for residential properties is 11.5%, so we multiply the 57,000 times 11.5%, leaving us with 6,600 as the assessed value. We then take this times the 20 mils. A mil is one thousandth or one dollar for each one thousand dollars of property value. So we would multiply by 0 .020 and we get 133 dollars in taxes. You can see that number at the bottom. The other three funds, supplemental general, capital outlay, and bond and in interest, do not get the exemption. So I combined them in the third column. We start with the $100,000 appraised value, multiply it by 11.5%, giving us a new assessed value. We then multiply that by the 31 mils, or .031501, giving us $362. In the last column, you can see the total mills of 51.501 and the total taxes of $495 for last year. This example represents what the homeowner would have paid last year. In this example, three things have changed. The appraised value of the home has increased 5.5%, so it matches the example in the news article. So we'll start with 105500 at the top. The second change is that legislators increased the exemption to $75,000 for this year. And the third change is that the total mill rate decreased by .007. I'm going to jump to the last column because we went through the last example in great detail. In the last column you can see the 51.494 mills and a total amount of $452. So how does that compare to last year? You might remember that we were at $495 last year. So the mill rate decreased by the .007, the property taxes decreased by $43, which is an 8.74% decrease for the homeowner in this example. The key point for this example is that based on the example in the news with a $100,000 home and a 5.5% property increase, the homeowner will actually pay 8.74% less in taxes this year. I do want to be transparent. It would still not be accurate to say that all homeowners will see an 8% decrease. It's not that simple. As the percent will change as the home value increases. The $75,000 exemption does not have the same impact on a two, three, or $400,000 home. And finally, this section of the article shows total estimated budget amounts for various funds and comes directly from our budget document. These numbers are accurate, but we're going to zoom in on the general fund of $32 million. This is another section of our budget that was published in the Capital Journal on August 22nd. Looking at the top line, you can see the general fund, and if you follow that across, you can see the $32 million. To the right of that, you see a, a $4.3 million, which is the amount of tax that will be generated by 20 mills in Shawnee Heights. Earlier I mentioned that every district in Kansas assesses 20 mills for this, fu this fund. Due to property values, the dollars generated by one mill vary widely across the state. These dollars go to the state treasurer who then redistributes them to dis districts based on the current funding formula in Kansas. The intent of the formula is to equalize educational opportunities for all students. So how does that impact us? In Shawnee Heights, we will collect $4.3 million locally, but will be funded for approximately $32 million worth of expenditures in this fund. The actual number from the state will depend on our final student counts for the year. This graph provides a quick overview of where our anticipated revenue for the year will come from. 76% will come from the state. 17% will come from local revenue such as local property taxes, gifts, and donations. And 7% will come from federal programs. The key point here is that we receive a large percent of our funding from the state, which has a positive impact for our students and our community. Thank you for taking the time to view this information. If you have questions at any time, please reach out.
thank you for your continued support of our school district.